When soldiers go to high altitudes, say above 12,000 feet, they can easily be affected by a condition known as acute mountain sickness. The problem is, there's no way to predict really right now who's going to be affected by it. The Army's working on a tool for that. Army researchers took 41 soldiers from an engineer unit in Missouri to Taos, New Mexico this past summer to study the effects of acute mountain sickness. They're trying to develop this tool that will help better predict with at least 80% or 90% accuracy who's going to get sick. See, the problem is three different soldiers could have three different reactions. One could go up there and be debilitated for up to 72 hours. Another just might have a light headache and a third might have no problems at all. And there's really no good way to predict right now. For years, they've been using questionnaires. The problem is soldiers think they're too tough. They basically don't complain about problems until they really affect them and they're out for the count. This new way of measuring you know, blood samples, other types of biometrics, is finding ways to really predict with good accuracy, with an algorithm, who's going to get sick and how they need to treat them either ahead of time or condition them for the operation or the mission. So for decades, when High altitude mountaineers had to go to a, an area, say in the Himalayas, to climb Mount Everest. They would go days or weeks ahead of time to acclimatize to the place. They would work their way up in stages, work their way back down and sleep. Their blood would become more acclimatized, their oxygen levels would get better, and they could operate at high altitudes. That's for extreme mountaineers. Well, soldiers don't have that luxury. They have to sometimes go straight into an operation at a higher altitude and work their way down, or a lower altitude and work their way up. So there's all kinds of variables that scientists have to configure to understand what's going to happen to a person and how they can react in short notice. Now in the past, they've tried to do conditioning for certain extended operations, but for more shorter term, they've done pre-medication, basically be giving people drugs ahead of time that will help you know, mitigate those symptoms. The problem is they don't know who's gonna be affected. Also, the drugs aren't always effective themselves, sometimes as low as 30 to 50%, and the drugs have side effects. So these new tools can actually help a commander or even a small unit leader, such as a squad or platoon leader, decide who in their unit might need preconditioning, might need these pre-medications, or may just not be able to take part of that mission because they're too sensitive to what might happen to them at altitude. So basically what researchers are gonna do is take reams of data that they've collected over the summer with these 41 soldiers, process that into some more information and new data to send off to Army Medical. Army Medical, probably in 2022, are gonna be able to evaluate this to see if they can actually release it as a tool to commanders to use if it's validated through their processes. So this is cutting edge research on the forefront of altitude work. And it's important because soldiers may be leaving Afghanistan now, but there are other high altitude areas where they could face competition, such as parts of Asia with China, even parts of Europe with Russia. Because if you're gonna fight at altitude, you gotta be able to breathe. And that's how this could be effective for future operations. For Military Times, I'm Todd South.